So welcome to this preview of the Pop Culture Challenge Tier 1 final. Now there's a couple of faces in here you might not have seen before on one of our videos. You'll know their name though because you've been following the scores. And there's a couple of recidivists who we are seeing again and we're delighted to be catching up with them. Uh, but for now, let's just crack on with some intros, uh, starting with Jack. Hi, I'm Jack Lewis um, and, and I quiz a lot with the uh, University of Sheffield sort of team, uh, which includes Lewis. Um, yeah, I've been quizzing for maybe about two years now, sort of um, in this sort of format and sort of picked up OQL when, um, when lockdown started really and sort of uh, been taking part in these sort of competitions since then. And this is the first time you've made a final of something like this, is it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, season one, I had some sort of really tough draws and sort of, I, I don't feel I really sort of did mm. too well in that one, but I feel I've, you know, really sort of done all right here, I guess. Cool. Uh, so let's stick with the uh, Sheffield connection. And uh, Lewis, who was a finalist in the first season of the PCT, you, you were new to quiz back in those days or at least yeah. this sort of thing. Now you are an old stager. So just, <laughs> just give us a little bit more, uh, more background uh, about yourself. Um, so I'm Lewis Jones. I'm from, uh, I live in Sheffield, but originally from Haverhill in Suffolk. Uh, I'm 30 as we record this, but I'm 31 in two days time. Um, I'm a journalism student um, and yeah I've done really nothing but do a quiz in the last 12 months. Uh, the first running of this competition was my first uh, Mimir competition at all and I got to the final which was extremely surprising and I've been very glad to see that my performances in this one have meant that it was not a fluke. Um, but yeah uh, I like a quiz, I like quizzing with Jack. I like uh, I like the quiz team and I love this community of people. <laughs> Tom, moving on to you. This is uh, again your first final. You've been around a little bit longer, perhaps uh, than others, but just for, for the for the benefit of those who uh, you know were looking at some outstanding scoring over the course of this competition, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yes, I'm Tom. I'm uh, old and unused to modern technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I'm also from Sheffield. Um, originally, but now I live in York. Um, and yeah, um, start. I bizarrely entered one GP about four years ago um, and did okay um, and did enjoy it, but also then didn't do anything about it. Um, and then during, when social options were reduced, um, just basically started doing some quizzing. And I've, I've run a pub quiz for the last 15 years. Um, so that's what I might do a bit ago. And Turns out there's a competition that doesn't ask about the things I know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> like worthwhile things. <laughs> so, yeah, I, know, I love it. The people who do it are great, um, and I really enjoy it. And it's, yeah. Fantastic. And lastly, but not least, last, I was going to say, lastly, but not leastly, I'm not I'm sure that's what I'm going to think. <laughs> I think that works. Um, but last, works. last but not least, um, Tom, um, now this is not your first final although you weren't in the pcc final you were in was it buccal final yes and i was in the final of um tier two last year as well and i and i think i won it actually so yeah tell us about the sort of person that manages to get into you at the final of two different competitions right well for benefit of everyone i'm tom speller i'm in terms of my professional background, I'm a workforce planner. And unlike the other three, I'm not from Sheffield. I'm actually from <laughs> Kent. Um, as you've alluded to, Gareth, not my first rodeo. So I've been doing quizzing probably for about 15, 16 years. I did University Challenge back in 2009, 10 when, when I was at Jesus College Oxford. I've done leagues since 2011. And, um, and really, when lockdown happened, I think it was, um, you know, kept, kept on doing it. But uh, just in the online format, really. Um, I mean, in terms of, I suppose, getting into the final, it's, I think the main thing I'll say is it's um, just in terms of the content, it's stuff that seems to stick in my brain a bit. As in, um, you know, it's, um, I just, you know, I watch a lot of TV, I watch a lot of sport, I read a lot, and um, things just stick in my brain, really. We'll see, we'll see how well that goes next week. Well, all of you have done fantastically well to get to the final of Tier 1. Um, I know from personal experience how blooming hard and, and how wafer thin the margins were at times 
to, to you know, the difference between being first or second or second and critically third. Um, were there any matches on your route to the final that really stick out in your memory as being particularly tough ones or particularly kind of important for you psychologically in any way? Jack, how about you? Uh, yeah, I think my week six game that had you in it, Gareth, um, it was us two, Will Swigart and I think Dan O'Malley. Mm. Um, and I think I came joint second with you. It was really close. I think Will was on 16 and we both finished on 15. Um, and obviously that meant a really sort of nervous wait to see whether I'd get into tier one. It was that week I was, uh, you know, every day updating the, the score sheet, sort of seeing I need this person to, to not get four points. I need this person to not get three points. Um, but yeah, that's probably as pleased I've, I've been in coming sort of joint second in a game. I think it was a, a really close one and, you know, really happy with my performance, even though it was a, a second place. It was a really high quality match. Um, yeah. And unlike you, I was left afterwards looking at where that cut off line was going to be. Yeah. And I was, mm -hmm. I think, half a point off the cut off, but then also was probably so a couple of other it. places as well. It was. Um, I think yeah. in the end, it was, I, I got in through one own question more than, than Dave Gregson, which was, yeah. you know, really sort of tight margins. Indeed. Lewis, how about you? Any, any particularly um, keystone matches in your trip yeah. to the final? I would say for me, the one, I mean, just a big psychological thing was week three. Like I, I think I went into the start of week three at the top of the table with like, you mm. know, most owns or whatever. Um, and I just, I felt the pressure too much week three. Um, I had an early call go against me, which I was aggrieved by. And I just let my head go. And I ended up finishing second. And I'm, you know, I'm sure I did all right, generally. But I was, I, I, you know, it really got me down. I was like, this is, this is stupid. But then I went, it's just a quiz. I, there's no reason for me to care about this at all. It's fun. And it's only worth anything if I enjoy it. Um, and then from then on in, I've had a much better time, including there was then, I think it was week five, I was in an, an extremely difficult game uh, with uh, Elsa, Fraser and Yogesh. And uh, all of us, Yogesh got 12 out of 15 of our own questions. There was nothing in it. And basically, I think it just came down to distance from Yogesh in the bonus order with him missing a couple of, you know, basics for UK players, but really hard ones for US players. And I came third and I was like, no, I, I couldn't have done anything. And I felt really zen about that. Um, and I've just been, yeah, since then, just like happy, just play my game, see how I do. And uh, I've done all right. I, I wanted to get into tier one again because I knew I could do it again. Um, and when I got that, I was very happy to be in the finals, exceeded my expectations. And uh, yeah, just you know, taking it every game as it comes and uh, enjoying it, really. I think that zen attitude is really good if you can do it. Because I yeah. think there's a temptation when you do really well to kind of think, yeah, you know, that's kind of how it should be. But when you do really badly, that the world is against you and, <laughs> and I've ruined my week yeah. and I've, you know, and there's probably no point carrying on with the whole thing. And I think sometimes, you know, we can kind of, you know, get too too carried away perhaps with one side or the other and forget actually we sure. do this for, for fun and for the love Definitely. of it. So good attitude. Somebody who wasn't kind of struggling um, for much of the tournament was, was Tom, um, who topped the, the, the ladder of in the regular season of, own questions with 70 own questions but Tom in amongst that you know what, what were the games that made you work for it there were three in particular I came third in one match um behind uh, Amy Goodell and uh, George Barton and mm. just got I mean I was a merited third nothing unfortunate about it just streams of questions I didn't know the answer to mm. in a row which is disappointing um and then I had two tie breaks um with uh, Dan O'Malley um, and Dom Tate, uh, with mm. the last of which was, uh, he got 13 of his own and I got 14. And just to use the week with the partridge questions, it was basically the, the old man quiz, <laughs> 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 which, yeah, which I thought was perfect, a bit more of it. Um, and yeah, just, and I, I lost in the quarterfinals last year on tie break to Nick Paul. Um, because I didn't know a sports question, which made me quite irritated. Because that's, that's not what should happen. That's the wrong way. Ask me a question about Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. I don't mind. <laughs> um, yeah, and it just—I mean, I'm, I don't take it super seriously. I'm probably mo moderately irritating at times during matches. Um, um, and just, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really enjoy it. And just, it to me, it's sort of—it's surprising. 
Because, I mean, I am, I will be the worst highbrow quitter in this room by a country mile. Uh, dre- dreadful. <laughs> Absolutely dreadful. Um, so it's just that they don't, just the stuff I doesn't know doesn't come up it, it, so often. So it, I, I just like it for that, really. I quite like doing okay. It's, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't be seeing you in the International Culture Challenge then. <laughs> you, you, it, well, you could, but I would look further down the spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and finally, Tom, um, what were what were the, uh, the the roadblocks on the way to your um, your final performance and how you got over them? Well, I, I quite like the point, Gareth, you made about um, actually tight margins because I think the theme for me last year was um, I think Lewis knocked me out of um, the tier I'm running because I in my final game I was against him and I think Michael McPartland and a few things went didn't go my way and um, ended up in tier two rather than tier one. Mm. I think this year, I mean, the two big matches for me would have been tier three and tier five because there were tie breaks. I was against really quite tough opponents. I think in tier three, it was Julia Hobbs, um, Frankie Fanko. Mm. In the fifth game, it was against Dave McBrien. And I think had I not won those two tie breaks um, at the end and got first, I think I would have had a deja vu of last year, mm. as in end up in tier two, one, tier one. I mean, certainly, I mean, week five was really also quite tough because I think it was um, there were zero X's and R in the in my game in, again, with Dave McBrien so very much no margin for error similarly in the quarterfinals when I was against Dowd, Jackson, Peter Edis and um, and who's the other person I get Will Swigert again mm. it was like really tight margins and it was um, you know so it's that's kind of been the theme of the tournament it's like you know they've been tight games and so far I think I've managed to come out the right side whereas last year probably not to the same extent Interesting I, th- I, I, I certainly took part in more um, tiebreakers than, than I did the previous year. And I don't know whether it's because the, the, the tournament mechanics worked out a bit better and, and people were kind of more closely matched um, than previously, or the questions were, were kind of better spread, but it did feel like there were a lot of games that went to tie breaks. Mm. Um, That's right, yeah. How, how, you know, when you go into tie break, you've only got three <laughs> questions. How do you kind of centre yourself and try and remain calm knowing that you know the clarity of thought is what what may take you through or not take you through I think um definitely agree keeping a calm head I think that's that's kind of what I've tried to do this year is in keep calm head I think the other thing and I think this served me and one of them was um if you do have a hunch I think go for it so I think there was a tie break where the, the answer was Westworld and I think the only clue I had was Michael Crichton I thought hang on a second did Michael Crichton direct the original film and I went for it and thought um thought well this isn't going to get me anywhere and and actually it turned out to be the difference in that in that tie break so it's so I think there's something about being calm but at the same time mm. being prepared to go on hunches mm. so semi-finals um there, there were some fearsome lineups um so we had Tom Speller, Dom Tate, Tom Adams, and Andrew Fanko. Um, and you know, you you were close, closely matched. Tom, you came out top on that. Sorry, <laughs> Tom Adams, you came down <laughs> top on that, and Tom Speller came it came second. But you know, that was you know, that that was a looks like a close fought match. It was a funny game, wasn't it, Tom? Because it was, yeah. I'd basically got all the things I knew at the start. So I think I had eight, eight out of eight on my own, and then limped home. I think would be would be the <laughs> phrase. So non in the last round, absolutely well done. Um, <laughs> and, um, and it was it's and I just like felt after three rounds that was basically, you know, I can't. I I felt I was sort of through already because mm. I had because just because I'm you know the questions that I my favourite subjects were all in a row at the start. Mm. Um, and then, as I failed to know anything about Molly and musicians and their favourite obscure fruits and or, or whatever it was, then just sort of, and I, I just I felt I was I was pretty safe. And then the excitement was, I mean, I only uh, you you would have equaled me, wouldn't you, Tom, if you got the last bonus right? And that's, yeah. So it was much close. It it felt less close than it was. Looking at the score, I was, I was surprised mm. it was that close. Mm. But yeah. obviously, it's just the way that the questions fell at that time. And I think mine was a very different experience because I think with mine, I was just thinking none of these questions are really suiting me. I'm, I'm scrapping for every point here. And this could get really, really uncomfortably tight while I was, um, while I was top. Whereas Tom was kind of you know, on the way to a full house, I think halfway through and thought, well, he's, he's going to get through. I'm going to have to scrap for this. Um, 
but and yeah it just went I think it just went in the blur really I mean um as I said it was uh, scrapping for every point and um and somehow when the when the music stopped I was um you know one ahead of the line at the end I mean just wasn't really more to it really but I but I remember I mean, it was satisfying getting through, but it wasn't uh, for me an enjoyable one because it was it was like you know I had to be switched on the entire time. Yeah, I I mean I I was in seat one, which you were Tom S and Lewis, you were also seat mm. one. After two rounds, I was on two points, and I was thinking, I'm so glad this is not being televised. <laughs> <laughs> this could yeah. be humiliating. But of course, what happened was all the stuff that I didn't know was kind of early on, and then I picked up throughout um didn't pick up well enough but um ended up with nine out of 15 so you know sometimes the the way that the quads uh, questions are distributed can kind of give you a an incorrect sense of how things are panning out for for you hmm. um so it's it's a funny old game um talking of funny old games looking at the second semi-final hmm. lewis jones will swigert tim hall jack lewis again another fearsome um set um, three of you getting 11 out of 15 on your own questions. Um, Jack, you managed to kind of push, a, push ahead and, and win by a couple of clear points. Jack, how was it? How was that game for you? Uh, it was, it was a lot closer than, you know, I think there was one point in it the whole way through. Um, I think me and Lewis both breathed a sigh of relief collectively when no Massively. one knew the rugby rugby league came yeah up. and we we weeks, had spoken about it every yeah. week going yeah we need to, we really need to learn something about <laughs> rugby at some point either of the rugby's one of them will come up uh yeah so for tim and will to not know either was pretty good yeah i mean if, if somebody knew them by themselves they would have got an easy four points i think from from any of three of the rest of us although will will did very i think will got one and hit the hit the post on another mm. but um yeah, I think I, I went into my final set of questions knowing I needed two out of three to really sort of guarantee stuff. And I knew one of them was the Dungeons and Dragons one. Um, and I think I got another one that was not the hardest one as well. So, yeah, really pleased to, to get through that. And, uh, mm. Yeah. Not on a tie break as well, which was always good because I <laughs> hate tie breaks. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to Lewis, who did yes. have to face a tie break against Will Swigert. So, I mean, sometimes people can just slip into the tiebreak zone at the end and it feels like a victory to mm. have even got into a tiebreak. And sometimes it kind of it feels a little bit like a defeat. But how was it for you? Um, well, first thing was that I was I was annoyed when Jack, who was already through, got a question about <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. And he could have he could have let it go by him, <laughs> assume that Tim Hall wasn't going to get it, and let me pick it up, so I didn't have to have the hassle. He didn't <laughs> want to do that. He wanted to play fairly. I respect it. Um, but yeah, ends up in there, and I was I was worried going against Will. I think Will was absolutely one of the best. Um, he an incredibly nice and interesting man, and I think I beat him in the semi final last time. Uh, and uh, I was I really thought that you know he was going to have the edge over me. He was incredibly lucky. Was it one of the rugby league questions? He said. Said whole oh, KR instead of just whole. And yeah. which, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, gutted for him because it was it was so so close. Um, and he got to at least two of the harder Malian musicians. So you know, in terms of the actual difficulty of the mm-hmm. questions, I think you know he was he was well beyond me. Uh, and then it just helped. The, the first question I think was relatively easy. The second one we said the same wrong answer. Mm-hmm. And then the third one, uh, which was who did that song with uh, Coldplay? I just happened to know it because. I listened to a podcast that used to be about chart music and I just happened to listen to it at that time that song came out. And I was sure that Will was going to get it because Will is, you know, music's a really, really good one mm. for him uh, and just didn't come. Um, so I felt incredibly lucky, especially then when I think the next three questions when they were read out were much harder and I had no clue on any of them and Will got them all. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, when it comes to a tie break, I think there's always an amount of luck. You know, you can't, the, the 15 quads, there's, you're always going to be able to get something you get your teeth into. If it's just three questions, luck is always going to be what it's going, going down to. And I just had uh, a bit of luck on the day, um, mm. uh, which I was I felt good about. But uh, yeah, feel, feel bad for Will because he's a, he's a hell of a player. Mm. Um, but I was I was glad I was glad to go through. I was I, the one good thing about that semi was knowing that Jack and I were both in it. I was glad that you know it was pretty much fifty percent chance that one of us would go through. Mm. Um, us both going through is a dream. Really great. 